Uh, so we're talking about uh, all these relationships we want to build with other organizations. And the first thing that, that I think about is just abstracting that back. Co-ops have a question in front of them. Uh, do we want to be transactional in our impact or do we want to be transformational? Right? And I assume that transformational is a lot more exciting and interesting to people in the room. All right? So if we want to do that, what's that going to require of us? Uh, it's going to look like something where we have qualitative uh, standards for what that impact is or things, does it align with our cooperative identity principles and values? Does it reflect who we are? So there's a quality to it, not just any change will do, not just any agenda, even if it's good, will do. Is it something that feeds into a market-based entity like us? So there's some filters there. But we also have this quantity issue, how do we expand the circle? How do we grow the impact so more people benefit and more substantially from what we're doing? And if we're going to do all that, we have to think like a system sinker, like, a, like there's a design principle at work here. And the thing that's coming to my mind just intuitively right now is think of it like we're like farmers, right? So if you're a farmer, you've got a crop, you're trying to grow this crop, and you want it to have a great yield and a great nutrient density, hopefully. And if you're really a great farmer, you know that you're managing soil first. So if we're going to grow this community, what's in that soil? Generally, People that know how farms work and know that uh, there's the nematodes and the worms and bacteria and fungus and all sorts of different things working to process and deliver nutrients and work in symbiosis. They make sure that the soil is structured in a certain way so that the water can penetrate and, and really nourish the deep roots of that crop. That's kind of thing like, that's how organizations can work. We don't have the equivalent of a chemical intensive agriculture. When we think about impact, we can just inject capital. Corporate social responsibility, a lot of times in an uh, investor-owned firm, might mean putting capital to a thing. Now, we can get some promotional rub off of this if we put some money into it. That's a good advertising. That's really the, the strategy. But for us, we, we, we don't really have that as an option. What we have is something that's a little more holistic. You know, how do we get all these organizations working together in symbiosis? That's what co-ops are about. Reciprocal economics and, and symbiotic ecology are kind of similar that way. And so we can't be all things to all people. We know we're an association and an enterprise simultaneously, and we work with markets. There's constraints on that. So we're not a charity, and we're also not profit maximizing. So it's our work to engage these things in a way that doesn't deplete our resources, but that can enhance them and can share the benefit. So for us, uh, I'll give you an example of how this can work. So we talk about expanding the circle of we. Some of that may apply to many different kinds of diversity. One of them I'll talk about right now because it's what's on my mind but socioeconomic. So we think about there's some folks who may not have the resources to participate in the same manner in our food co-ops which have chosen to specialize in more expensive things. I mean, the things that are grown the right way or what we think of as the right way, organics and fair trades and things tend to have a premium. So how do we expand that circle? And there's a couple of ways. Uh, one, if we're, if we're like the farm, I think what's a barrier to this crop really manifesting? For us, some of that's price. And this co-op, uh, like several co-ops, we have a means-tested program for food access. We call that community discount program. We just enhance that to 15% off every day for people who are on food assistance programs, et cetera, because we know that's about the balance point where our kind of product starts to look a lot like the conventional counterpart. So now you have a real choice, not just, I'm going to sacrifice to trade up. I can, I can do that on the level, even if I don't have a lot of resources up front. So we've leveled that playing field. And that's, that's removing barriers is important, but it's not enough. We also, how do we activate that soil? How do we really uh, build something uh, that's more transformational? And that's going to require going outside because we're not a charity. We can't directly deal with food access in the way that maybe a food bank can. So we have a food bank behind us. And uh, guess what? We partner with them in, in, in a multitude of ways. Uh, one, we, we help raise funds. We donate tons and tons and tons of food. And we heard Prasanna speak to a similar thing Davis is doing. I think that's, that's wonderful. We've taken a step further, creating a member volunteer program, uh, or reforming one that maybe wasn't uh, doing this kind of work, to directly inject volunteerism. So we give members opportunities to sign up for shifts and get discounts off of their groceries here, uh, and, and while they're doing the work of helping that food bank to run. And it serves about 100,000 people a year. So there's a need, that's our community. They may not be able, even with a community discount program, to avail themselves of what we have here but they're still here. And principle seven, concern for community, we can't run from that. If we don't embrace the fullness of the cooperative character and the responsibility that comes with that, then we're more like a FOOP. 
we kind of are co-opted, but not really. We're kind of fakers. We couldn't really address 100,000 people in need on our own. But we amplify everything they do. The quality is better and the scope is bigger because of what we're doing. We can do that with many other things. I mean, I could go on about programs all day long, but the core concept is those folks we can be symbiotic with. We can take resources that uh, one plus one, uh, maybe it sounds like it's two, but it's really three. Because when we work together, we create something bigger. We're, we're generating value that we couldn't do alone. And there's a lot of organizations we can work with. With our uh, community kitchens program, it's not just food access, it's do people understand the need for this food or what to do with it. Well, one example I think we have is at 10 classes coming up in a row for LGBTQ youth. So they come in as, uh, as groups and are learning about nutrition, learning about cooking and doing it. You know, the community kitchen program has helped thousands of people and we've doubled the number of people participating in it over the past year. That's another example where we link with many other organizations to get students in there. We couldn't do that on our own. We could put up all the advertisement in the world. We talk about attracting diverse staff. I know our recruiting and, and development manager, Jeff, knows that if Jeff just goes out in the world, he may attract people, he may not. It's like fishing. We don't fish in a barrel. You know, we want to go out, where are these people already aggregating, and how do we link meaningfully with those organizations? Now, all of a sudden, our candidate pool looks more robust, and you can see our staff diversifying. You can just see it. Look at our customer base. Look at our staff go shop around. That's not an accident. So I'd just say that without all those other parts of that soil ecosystem, you're not going to have a healthy soil. You're just applying that same kind of intensive agricultural practice to your community programs, and I think that's just something to think about. Again, uh, maybe that's just what's on my mind right now because I didn't prepare any of that, but I hope it's helpful to you. So thank you. Thanks, Dan.